Hello everyone, welcome to this breaking SiliconANGLE news segment. I'm John Furrier, reporting for SiliconANGLE and host of theCUBE. This breaking news powered by theCUBE is going to talk about Amazon's recent announcement today on new offerings to help telcos jumpstart their innovation. That's the headline on siliconangle.com. Of course, the release from AWS announces AWS Telco Network Builder, among other things. Next week, we'll be at Mobile World Congress from Monday through Thursday, the 27th to the 30th for live coverage from Barcelona. The Cube will be there. My guest here to break down the news from AWS is Jan Hofmeier, Vice President of Amazon's EC2 Edge. Jan, an industry veteran heading up the Edge for EC2 for AWS, the Telco Edge, the Network Builder. Welcome to the breaking news segment. Thank you, John. Great to be here with you today. Yeah, your background, you've seen this movie on network build outs over the years. You know how important the network has been. It's been one of the areas of innovation. I won't say the last area of innovation, but the cloud started at the low hanging fruit, compute services, but the network is so strategic. AWS has done a great job. We've covered deep stories on from the silicon to all the, the advances in the data center with James Hamilton, uh, uh, DeSantos, the whole team. Now, when you talk about edge, you're talking about telcos, you're talking about new network edge points that are providing innovation with data. And this is the, the next frontier in cloud computing. You guys today announced a, a service called AWS Telco Network Builder, a fully managed service that helps telcos deploy, run, and scale their networks using AWS Cloud. Can you share with us what the services are? Take a minute to explain the news, and then we'll get into the conversation. Absolutely, uh, John. So first of all, um, you know, I think it's important to define this edge you call the next frontier. Um, so the edge for us, you know, it, it, you know, we have our 31 regions across the world, and uh, what we do here is we take the, the 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 AWS infrastructure that runs in our regions and we bring it closer to our customers, and uh, we bring it closer to our customers through local zones that runs in our metro areas, and then even running on-prem in our customer data centers through. Uh, 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 the service called Outpost that brings that same infrastructure around the regions all the way into our customer data centers. And um, one of the exciting things for us was uh, when 5G came out, um, you know, it was the first, it was the first wireless technology that was designed for the cloud. And what I mean with that is they took the, 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 the design itself and they broke it down into, into microservices, they call them network functions. And for the first time, you can now deploy a network down to its granular functions um, and, and de deploy that in the cloud. So, so that was the exciting sh shift in the networking world when it comes to wireless, is the first cloud native uh, wireless design of wireless architecture. And uh, we've been working very closely with our customers as they deploy this new 5G network within the AWS cloud. You know, I love that network function. I'm glad you brought that up a little bit earlier than I was going to get into, but I'll get into it. Andy Jassy said to me on the Cube at reInvent, when asked if he would rebuild AWS today with the technology available, how he would build AWS. And you know what he said? He would use serverless. And in a way you're kind of getting at this next network function. It's kind of like the serverless for networks. Talk about the importance of this is a really big deal. It's a very nuanced point, but this is where the innovation is. Can you, sh can you share your vision on why the network function, this innovation area is so important and what's the impact going to be for the, the customers? No, it's a great question. So the first thing with, with the innovation here is for the first time, you know, in the past, when you deploy a, a network, whether it's a wireless network in this particular case, um, you have these very large components that that may, that contains all of the functions, which means deploying changes and changing that system took a very long time. Um, being able to test all the components that's part of this one big release just made it very slow to to innovate, very slow to 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 to, uh, to you know introduce new changes, new functionality for customers. With network functions, you can deploy and, and update a single function within the network to enable a specific functionality for a customer or for, for how you operate the network. Uh, and you can do it independently. So it really unlocks the, the innovation and the speed to market for, for our customers, for Telco customers, by, by being able to, to have that granular uh, control over the network. So you're saying then that the telcos who are known as being like move as fast as glaciers um, in the industry now can move faster with the network function. That's what you're, and more agile, is that the benefit? I would never, I would never say that. Okay, um, I did. But, but, you did, but uh, <laughs> what I would say is, you know, I do think that this allows them to, to really take advantage of cloud yeah. 
and and what we've seen, what cloud did to compute and to storage and that innovation it unlocks, it really puts the telcos in a position where they can un unlock that same velocity that we've seen cloud do for all the other industries. All joking aside, I love to always take a shot at the telcos because they are slow, but they make a lot of money, so it's okay for them. But uh, all kidding aside, well, there's a lot of legacy that's been built up over the telcos over the years, and it's it's become and one of the reasons why they're slow is like any other any environment that's a lot of legacy and scale. It's hard to make a change. So the question I have for you is, can you talk about what this network builder means for the customers and to explain how it works? Is it software? Is it a managed service? Can, does, do telcos have to change how they do things, their terminology? What's the operational change, if any? Because again, this is similar to what we've seen in the enterprise. Legacy slows things down. What's your take on that? How would you explain the service, how it's consumed, and what's the impact? So, so the service we introduced or we launched is called the AWS Telco Network Builder, and it is a fully managed service um, that that uh, AWS manages on behalf of our customers. And you should think of it, you know, if I have to give it one word, it really does all of the automation for 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 how you build, deploy, and operate a network. Um, so let me break that down a little bit. So it, in its most basic form. Um, it is the automation layer that, that runs the, the deployment, they call it the CICD pipeline, but the deployment of these network functions. So it allows the, the telco to, to deploy their, their network functions in, in AWS cloud. Um, the second thing it does is it allows them to, to apply the configurations um, and the lifecycle management. So at, once these, the, these uh, functions are deployed, the ongoing operations of, of uh, deploying new configuration to it it facilitates all of that. And it also gives them the visibility, the operational monitoring and visibility of their network that runs there. Now, why is that important is, one, is it gives them that, that capability, but also it exposes all of this new cloud um, to them in a very standard way that is the same APIs and language they use today to operate their networks. So the systems now, think of their, their business systems that, that interfaces with, their, with, the, with the network itself, it can still continue to speak the same language, the same APIs. So Telco Network Builder exposes on the top side, the same APIs and, and language for, for how they interact with it. And then under, underneath the cover, we, we deal with the cloud native components of how to then deploy and operate these, these functions. Okay, so managed service, you abstract away some of that, that layer there for integration purposes. So there's not a lot of, Lingua Franca with translations on their part, operationally, they can get into it. Um, I get that. On the other service that you announced, that you, you kind of, I think you might've mentioned it. There was a second service, the integrated private wireless on AWS. What is that about? Can you explain that? Is that related to the telco builder? Or is that a component of it? Is it yeah. a service? Is that the network function? What is that second service about? Yeah. So um, that's a completely separate service uh, from the telco network builder, You're referring to the integrated private wireless. Um, on AWS, that is a program. And it's a program where today we have uh, so many of our telco customers have private wireless solutions that was built and developed on top of AWS, running in AWS. And uh, this program will enable our customers, AWS customers, to find the right wireless solution offered by our telco customers and bring those two together. Um, so the telco customers, where they develop these private wireless solutions on AWS, they bring tremendous value with that service, with their own services. Um, be it that they bring their own spectrum uh, for licensed spectrum that can be used. They have um, the ability to offer fully managed services where they have people that can do the RF planning for you. They can do the on-site management of the systems for you, of the network itself. So it's really connecting our customers with the right solution to solve their private wireless needs. And can you give an example? Because you're, what you're saying is the business have their own private spectrum that they want to then scale with the cloud. Is that kind of right? Because Or what else, give an example of who uses private spectrum or yeah. private wireless. So in many countries in the world, um, there is no shared spectrum. Uh, so in the US we have, uh, as an example, we have the um, the CBRS spectrum, which is a spectrum given that can be used without having a specific license that is issued to a telco or to, to, uh, to, to a telco. And uh, so in the US, we can leverage that shared spectrum 
to, to create a private wireless solution. In many countries, you don't have shared spectrum. And so, um, you know, as part of our launch, uh, you know, uh, telco partners like Deutsche Telekom, KDDI in Japan, Orange, um, you know, and Telefonica Spain, and even T-Mobile here in the US can now bring their own network on-premise for private use, um, if, you know, running in the AWS uh, cloud. So it's, it's almost like a VPN for wireless, if you think about it in a weird way, they're bringing Spectrum into the scale for private use for the company. So that, I guess that what enables more services at scale for either you, people on the yeah. go, is that is that the benefit? You, you can really think of it as a, as a private network. So if you think about the, your phone connects to a public network with all the other phones and all the other consumers out there, here you can create a, a, a private network that only you as a company have access to and you can control who have access to that network. <laughs> Got it. Okay, one little caveat I want to get uh, on the record here before we get in the next set of questions because you guys use the word CSP. First thing that jumps in my mind is cloud service product. I'm so used to covering cloud service, but also it means communication service provider. In your context, this is communications service providers. Is that that is correct. correct. Okay. That's and, a they, great and they and they are include they include who? So the, the, that those are how we refer to the telco industry uh, as as communication service providers. So Think of think of the of the T-Mobiles of the world and and the um, and Deutsche Telekom. These are the the telcos that that refer to them as as communication service providers. Okay, good. Making sure we're getting that out there. I kind of want to get that form. Cloud service providers are great, and the communications have all the scale and the, and all the edge access. Okay, so Amazon has been no stranger to the edge. It's been talked about almost in the past three reinvents. You, you know, the beginning was you start to see Outpost. That was years ago. You got wavelength. You got satellites. A lot more equipment being deployed for edge type use cases. The telcos going cloud native is a pretty big deal. We think this is going to be the beginning of Mobile World Congress or MWC, they're rebranding because they've been taking the word mobile out of it. But MWC will probably be moving to being a cloud show for communication service providers meets business and application developers. So I have to ask you, how do you guys see the conversations going with respect to one, deploying the infrastructure to get cloud native? You mentioned you know, the service, okay, builder. Now you got the private wireless, I can see the business tie-in. What are some of the progressions you're seeing from uptake? Is it infrastructure, then apps? What do you see as the vision of this announcement going? Obviously you got EC2 instances, EKS clusters, VPC resources, you know, operational network services, I get that. But what's the, take me through the, the, the storyboard here and the progression of the, of the execution. Yeah, you know, I think there's, 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 there's two, two elements to it. I think the first one is just, well, you know, the very core, the core business of modernizing their networks, giving them that agility uh, and uh, an ability to bring to market new new solutions and new services much faster. So that is just the, the modernization and cloudification of their existing infrastructure. It also sets them up to bring new services um, that are much more cloud native services um, to, to their customers. And uh, so I think you will see You'll see that as a big focus when we go into Mobile World Conference. Last year was all about private. Yeah. That was the big story last year. I think this year is going to be about platforms and how they develop platforms running in the cloud and offer those as services for their customers. Yeah, and I think this has been kind of happening for a while. I think there's been, we've been waiting for that tipping point. I think it's finally here uh, and congratulations. I got to ask you, obviously I know Amazon has been covering all the news for over a decade now, 12 years. Um, you guys are always customer centric and customer focused. What was the customer challenge here? What were the CSPs facing um, when building out these tech telco networks in the cloud? And how did you guys build the telco network build to address them? Can you talk specifically about what, were the bull, what was the bullseye of this? Because there was a customer need, what were their challenges? What was the big problem that you solved or the enabler uh, for, for the CSPs? Well, that's a that's a great question, and and, and you're so right. We 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 almost never just build something and hope they would come. It's always based on a customer need that we saw, and and as we were engaging with our customers on bringing on bringing their 5G networks onto the cloud onto AWS, um, we recognized two key key things. The first one was that the skill set of of understanding how to develop in the cloud and deploy in the cloud um, from a network perspective. That, that was just not there. So there was a fairly big step for them to, to, to understand how to do that. Um, and Delco Network Builder addresses directly that, that need. Um, it makes it much easier. 
Um, it will also allow them to, to onboard and become much more cloud native um, uh, centric and, and be able to have that skill set. Um, but it really accelerates them onboard onto the cloud. So I think that's that's the very first one that it does. The second one is it really accelerates the visibility that cloud gives them. Because we we make the, the, the data available to them that they can then use in terms of their monitoring and, and observability, um, make that data available to them. So I think we you know, it greatly accelerates their ability to then also see the, the, the performance of the network. Um, and, with, and, and, and having that information, I think will allow them to innovate much faster. Okay, uh, you mentioned earlier at the top of the interview, Amazon's pretty complex in its regions. Again, there's many of them out there, more coming on every day. They first hit the continents, then they hit regions. Now you got locales going up. up. What is the impact to the uh, availability inside AWS's network? I mean, because what is the current availability? Is it just America, North Virginia, US East, West? What's the, what's the topology look like from a su support standpoint? Is it global at launch and is it available now? So when we launched, where we launched the service today, um, the service is available in five regions, and we plan to to to, to uh, take it to all of our regions. Uh, again, based on our customers' uh, uh, footprint and where they are where they are uh, using the service. So today, in five regions, our goal will be that this will roll out to the other regions as well. Okay, I got I got to ask the question on uh, customers. Who's up on up and running? Can you name names? You mentioned some of the CSPs. What's the adoption look like? What's the uh, pipeline for customers look like? You know, there's there's two kinds of customers here. There's one is the customer, the telco, that it will actually use the uh, that will use Telco Network Builder as a service. Uh, for that, we are um, we've got Telefonica, O2 Telefonica, as as one of the, the telco customers. The next layer are the you know at a at a at a at a, um, at a telco. You have this automation layer that talks to some bigger orchestration layer on top. And for that, we have uh, two uh, of our partners with Cloudify and Infosys uh, that will be, that's already integrated with, with Telco Network Builder. And then underneath, we, we spoke about those network functions. Um, we've also already announced with um, uh, Mavenir as being one of those network function technology partners that, that is uh, supported in, uh, in Telco Network Builder. Big fan of the network function, by the way. Want to just say that personal bias there. I think that's innovative. Love the management orchestration concepts. You guys thinking large scale. That's what telcos are used to. Jan, you've been in networks for a long time. You know, you know, networks are everything. But as you know, there's the easy way, there's the hard way, there's the cheap way, the expensive way. And so there's all kinds of different ways to slice and dice the network, right? So now you got that challenge um, in terms of latency, big, big discussion point, and two, security. The two conversations that are coming up more and more on my Cube interviews with, with customers and practitioners, they want latency to be as low as possible. You can't change the laws of physics. However, security, the bad guys are better than the good guys right now. So what do you say to that? What's your take on this? So let me take the two. I think on the latency, I, I totally agree with you. I think there's, they, we've already seen big use cases that, that drives the, the need for, for better latency. Um, the ability for, with with Telco Network Builder, one of the big advantages there is that once you deploy, let's say in a region, it is literally you can specify a local zone and deploy the exact same function in a local zone, and it makes the ability to deploy in in, in, our, in the different um, AWS locations much much faster and easier for the telcos. So if they need to get closer to a customer, they can deploy into a local zone, uh, or they can even deploy on site onto an outpost. So it really allows that that ability to deploy closer much much easier. From a security, I think it goes back to that earlier point I made around the the visibility, having the data and access to the data that they can then feed into their security systems. Um, you know that I think that'll be a, a, a key source of information into their systems. With with Telco Network Builder, we also use the security services of AWS that specify who has permissions to to make changes, can view the data, um, so they have fine grain control um, using the AWS security services to to control exactly who who can access the the network. Well, Jan, I really appreciate you taking the time to unpack the announcement, you know, an offering that you got, you got cloud a network, uh, telco, telco network builder, and then you got the private wireless service, great stuff, integrated private wireless for AWS, great stuff. Final couple questions. Okay, zoom back. What's the impact of the industry? How do you see this evolving? What, do you, what will this enable as you look out? 
I know you really can't make any, any forward looking statements, but just from a technical industry perspective, put your practitioner hat on knowing what's ha out there. What's going to enable this? Because cloud native and telco is coming. That brings open source. That brings a whole nother paradigm, network functions, serverless, all the goodness of cloud coming into the communication server. What's the impact? Yeah. You know, I think, um, let me start with the, with, with, uh, at the highest level. I think the, the first one is, you know, recently, um, you know, in, in, in February this, this year, um, uh, Omnia reported, uh, in the Omnia report, they found that the telcos can reduce the OPEX versus revenue ratio by more than 10% by simply migrating their workloads to the cloud. Um, that is a huge savings. Uh, you know, they're looking at just network operations to drop from about 18% to 13%. Um, they're expecting that the IT operations will drop from 6%, 6.2% to 3.5%. So just from a cost savings perspective, which is really important, uh, imagine just if you just within the current macroeconomic climate we, we are all in at the moment, there, there are huge um, uh, optimizations, cost optimization that they can do by, by moving to the cloud. I think the second one is just all of these new use cases. Um, I do think that the private use case we spoke about last year at Mobile World, that will continue to open up new opportunities uh, and new revenue opportunities for, for the telcos. Um, so I think that, that, that in itself, and then 5G, there's a lot of capabilities that still needs to be enabled in the 5G that is available there, that is in the specification and as the networks build out, they will have the technology. The ability to then deploy that very fast and get that into their systems. With something like Telco Network Builder, that really accelerates and helps them to get that functionality out there as soon as it's ready. So I think on all those fronts, you will see a, a big impact. Final question for you. Obviously cloud had this progression, IaaS infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, powering SaaS apps. AWS dominated the IaaS, developed the PaaS layer, and really the ecosystem was software as a service. Here in telco, it's kind of similar, but I mean, it's not as organically growing as, as cloud computing was born with AWS. It's almost turning that IaaS PaaS SaaS in real time. I mean, it's converting it over. What are some of those PaaS layer pa platform and SaaS services you guys see enabling? Is it cloud native applications at the edge? Is it the use of data and security at the edge? How do you see this progression? Is it what is there any similarities between IaaS pass and SaaS on cloud and and the, the state of the edge uh, right now? Because you know e compute and storage, networking. I mean that's good goodness. That's what it's going to happen. How is how is that going to build out? You know I think two things. One of one is just for the telcos and what's happening here with this with um, we're coming to the cloud the network fabric is truly becoming cloud and part of the cloud. And you think about, about Telco Network Builder, it really exposes it as an API. It exposes the network as an API. And now suddenly you can interface with it no different than you interface with compute and storage. So I do think that this brings the, the network truly into a, a cloud native construct that can be used um, the same way we use, we use compute and storage. So I think that's the, the first one. I think the second one is just there are so many um, use cases where we still have compute and storage and network running on prem that's not in the cloud, and and I and I and, and I and I do see an acceleration of how those workloads can participate in the cloud, and it's not necessary that they always come to the region. Um, bringing the cloud to the edge, I think, is as important. Um, and that's why it's so important for us to focus on how we bring local zones and outposts closer to the edge so that those applications that once at the edge, it needs to be at the edge, can run in the same and benefit from the same cloud economics and cloud, cloud, cloud capabilities at the edge. Awesome, uh, great news. It's the beginning we think of a major shift that's continuing to accelerate. We think what the pandemic did for work, this is going to accelerate distributed computing and cloud computing to the edge. Jan Hoffmeyer, Vice President of Amazon's EC2 Edge on theCUBE here, breaking down the innovations that telcos are getting to jumpstart their, their profit, their capabilities. AWS announcing, AWS Telco Network Builder. Jan, thank you for, for coming on. Thank you very much, John. Okay, you're watching Breaking Silicon Angle News. I'm John Furrier, reporting the AWS News, and also CUBE host here, powered by theCUBE. Thanks for watching.